of this means please take off your shoes. And that dates back to when there was coal mining here. So they didn't want the coal miners to bring any coal dust into the buildings where they lived because it would be so dirty and you know. So everybody had to take their shoes off out here and then you'd just walk in your socks up to your apartments. And that's still a rule. So you still do that. And I think it's just to keep, you know, it a lot cleaner. So you will see in a lot of places here that you have to take your shoes off. But in like the supermarket and some restaurants, you don't. But in some restaurants, you take your shoes off, which for us is completely normal. So everybody keeps their shoes here. I know a lot of people ask like, don't people steal them? And generally, no, we have extremely little crime here. But when people get drunk on the weekends, they do tend to kind of go home with the wrong shoes from the bars and stuff if they've taken them off or take the wrong shoes here. But it doesn't happen that often. There's always like the one case every week. Not even, and I haven't seen it in a really long time. But okay, so when I lived, I've lived in this building, I lived upstairs in one of the, the apartments for like a year. I never had an issue, ever. And in the other place I lived, also never an issue. So I don't think it's like that bad. You can also put your clothes here if they're dirty and you don't want to bring them upstairs. And I know there's a scooter here. <laughs> people like, you know, you just trust people here. And I'll show you the laundry room. Wait, is it locked? Maybe it's locked now. Okay, so in here is the laundry room. They've actually put a lock on it now. That's because otherwise people could, like anybody could come in here and do their laundry. Um, so there's like two washing machines for this entire building. <laughs> I did not think laundry situation in this house was good enough, but so I would just, and you couldn't book it or anything. So you just have to run down and check when you could do your laundry. It was weird. But I think some people did have their own machines in their houses, in their, uh, in their apartments. I did not. I, I believe this is from when, yeah, there was coal mining. Because this is everybody who's working. Look, so this was the people living here and like who's working uh, in the morning, in the afternoon, nights, who's on vacation and who is sick. Or you put your little pin in and that's still here. They haven't really changed a lot of these. <laughs> this is what this looks like a lot of information if you live here numbers what to do and you know yeah as you can see we have uh, information in i'm assuming this is thai because we have a big thai population up here so they also put the instructions in their language to make it super clear if it's there's an emergency you have them in norwegian english Now you might be wondering where we are and what I'm doing. And I'm here to get my nails done. I am at a Katerina's house, which is my nail girl. We don't have a proper nail salon in town, like a, you know, salon, but we have a Katerina who does them from our home and we're very happy she does. Nails is just one of those things that I love. I've always been obsessed with having nice looking nails. So I'm happy that we have her. This is just a part-time job for Katarina. She works at the Cafe Fruene full-time, so that is where she is, you know, daily. She also has two kids that go to school here, and I asked her why she moved here, and she said that they moved from Ukraine six years ago to flee from the war. And at that time, it wasn't difficult at all to move to Svalbard, so that was the perfect choice, she said. She has been doing my nails for a few years now, I think like three or more, and it has been so cool to see how much her Norwegian is improving. In the beginning, we couldn't really communicate because she doesn't know any English, but now we just talk in Norwegian to each other and it works perfectly. So I'm very happy we have her. She's so good at what she does. So cozy.
No. But he said snowing it. Up, 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 up. But he said snowing. There's snow. Oh my god, you're barking. How's it been? How did it go being alone? Your first two hours. In like months. <laughs> it's gonna be so crazy, right? I think you did so good. Okay, no, let's go in here. Come in here. Yes. Lego de baka. Jump up on the couch. Hey, come down. Hey. Oh, yes. I am working a little bit over here, creating a video. It looks messy, but it isn't. And as you can see, we have a new desk. And here is a preview to printing. We're gonna make a full video on this because I want to sell prints and this is one of the first test prints and I'm, I'm just blown away by this. I think this can be so much fun. Look at that. And that's also a test print. And I'm amazed. So that's a plan. We want to be able to ship out prints for Christmas so we are planning to get this all kind of like set up. I just need the packaging and figure out the post because that's quite difficult. So if I do those two, I can start selling it in time for Christmas, which means starting to ship and sell like next week. Oh no, in two weeks. So I hope for that. Now I'm gonna sit down and work some more and then I'm gonna take Grim on a walk. Also, did I tell you guys that I got plants and that I'm not enjoying this process? Yeah, I'm not enjoying having plants. They require so much work and you can see they're not like doing great. Grim, sluta! So I got a grow light, but I have to put them in like quarantining in here. No, in more like photosynthesis quarantine or plant prison or actually I'm going to call this plant daycare. I've had this plant for a week. Look at it. Like, I don't know how. I'm giving them water, but of course we have no daylight. Look at it, it's so grumpy. It's not good. You know, if they die, I just throw them in the ocean and forget about that this ever happened. What is it, game? It's so dark outside. Have you seen? It's 2 p.m. and there's no daylight at all. Whoa. Okay, Grim, Polar Night interview. How does it feel? Bloop, bloop, bloop. <laughs> this is your microphone. Okay. I'm gonna take that as it feels great. Does it feel great? How does it feel? How do you feel about the polar night? It's, it's just a fake microphone. You don't have to get so paranoid. Some head massage? Yeah. Let's go look at the outside. Oh, sorry. We're not going to. Uh... Oi. Just wait a little bit, then we go outside, you and I. Let's mix this. Is this a good idea? Una banana? What's so good about my banana pancakes is that there's no, absolutely no method to the madness. There's also no measuring. And I never remember what I do, so I do differently every time. <laughs> And that also means that the result varies from excellent to, I mean, it could have been better. But that's what comes with cooking and not knowing how to properly cook. It's an adventure. I'm okay with that. I also always put cottage cheese in mine because cottage cheese melts and becomes cheesy. But it doesn't taste like cheese, so it's, it's just 
just incredible. Also, I have no idea how much I'm gonna use. I wanted a lot more. Yeah. I'm putting protein powder in it. That kind of helps stick it together. It feels like a lot. It also makes them protein pancakes. Put a lot of protein in here. Also put some oats in because it will help it stick too. But it also will make it drier. I think. I feel like we're getting somewhere. I'm also mixing this with a fork. No judgment. This is a judgment free zone. Uh, cinnamon. You know, what? you know what's very important? It's a lot of cinnamon. We're talking like a lot. Maybe cardamom. Please don't forget the cardamom map. This is Christmas. This could be good. Oh. Are we gonna make a cardamom, cardamom buns this Christmas? Mm -hmm. We're gonna do so much baking. We're deciding for Christmas, like the Dece December, December vlogs, we're gonna bake a lot of the Scandinavian things and Swedish things that we bake and show you guys, and hopefully you will do it as well. We're gonna make lussekatter, which is saffron buns. We're gonna make knäck, which is knäck. We're gonna make kola, which is kola. <laughs> kola is, what's it called? It's caramel something? No. And we're also gonna make gingerbread houses, and Lynn's gonna come and decorate with us. And we're gonna make gingerbread. So we're just gonna start the, like December off with a lot of those kind of fun uh, kitchen stuff. We're just gonna do a bunch of stuff that we usually do when we are in Christmas mode with our families because we're gonna stay up here during the whole Christmas. And I do that every year because I love Christmas here. It's so cozy and going down to the mainland for Christmas is chaotic. And we just feel like we prefer staying up here. Also with Grim, otherwise we would have to leave him with someone. Oh, I can't. No. If they want to celebrate Christmas with us, they are more than welky. Welky? They're more than welcome to come up to Svalbard. Okay. You just wait. Oh. But this could work. You need to wait for a lot of bubbles. You need to be fast under there. Oh, I think these are going to be perfect. We're going to give Christopher a taste test. Honey? Okay. Smug up on that. Mm. Really nice. Juicy. Yeah. Is it top three of the ones I've done, right? I have no idea what I did differently this time. Probably. But definitely so much more moist. Mm. Moist, I'm oh, burning them, ah! Here is the final product. And this is brown cheese, which is this. So it's like a block of caramelized cheese. And it's a very, very Norwegian thing. I absolutely love this. So highly recommend. If you see brunost, brown cheese, go get it. It's goat cheese, right? Caramelized brown goat cheese. I don't know if it's. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Double check on this. A mix of goat and cow. This stuff is incredible. So go get it. I have it on sweet food, but we also, yeah, I mostly have it on like a sweet dish like this. People in Norway have it on bread, don't they? Hmm. Yeah. That's how they eat it. They eat it with toast. Mm, waffles and toast. But when they have it on bread, it's toast, jam, and this, right? That's the Norwegian way. I don't know. You're Norwegian. I only eat it with the uh, Waffles. Cheese. But I with toast and then I don't have any jam. Okay, yeah. I think when I worked at the school, all the kids had jam and brunos, and I think it's a whole thing. Here you go. Brunch. Thank you. Yes.
Mm. Incredible. Nice. Best thing you've ever had. Yeah. Oh yeah, the best in the world. Mm -hmm. What can you say when you're together with a chef? <laughs> <laughs> no, really nice. Tasty. You hear that, people? Oh, so 